name's Janessa, I'm the co-CEO of Simply Elope, and I'm here for your tip of the week. This week I'm talking about how to have a small wedding in the great state of California. The first place to start when planning a small wedding in California is you've gotta choose your destination. California is a ginormous place, and there are all sorts of amazing destinations to choose from when thinking about eloping or having a wedding in California. So whether you're going for the Big Sur, Monterey vibe, or you're just wanting palm trees in Los Angeles or San Diego, I highly recommend that you get really specific on the destination in California that you wanna hold your ceremony. When you're choosing your destination, it's actually really important to keep in mind how many guests you're going to invite. That'll absolutely dictate the kind of venue that you can book, as well as the date, season, budget. From top to bottom, the amount of guests that you're inviting are really gonna determine a lot of restrictions around you for your ceremony. So whether you're going to have a small wedding with 20 people or 80 people, that's gonna dramatically vary the types of places that you can book. So I would recommend getting real specific on the amount of guests that you're going to invite. That way you know the limitations on venue that are in front of you prior to booking a place. Now with your guest count, I recommend you get real clear about what your budget is. It's really easy with a small wedding to blow that budget out of the water. I would recommend for a ceremony that's between 30 to 80 guests, planning for about $10,000, $15,000, yeah, that's right. I said ten to fifteen thousand dollars. That's a scary price point to you. I recommend you a low. You know what I mean. But anyways, for real skis, get down and dirty with your budget. Determine how much you can afford because that's going to dictate what kind of venue you can book and how many people you can invite. Once you've got your destination, guest count, and venue on the lockdown, make sure you're actually locking it down. Get a contract or a permit in your possession prior to sending out those guest invites because I hate to break it to you, you don't have a venue until you have it signed on the dotted line. So before you start getting crazy about sending out your guest invites, make sure that you've signed a contract, terms of agreement, or you have an actual permit in your possession. When you're figuring out your reservation with your venue, with your site, with your park, wherever you're having your ceremony. For your terms of agreement and contracts, make sure you're reading the fine print. There's gonna be information about cancellations, deposits, what kind of decor you can or cannot have, what kind of catering you can or cannot have. So I recommend getting real deep with those terms of agreements because it might really limit or restrict the types of things that you can do for your ceremony and reception. Okay. So we're making progress. You've got your destination, your venue, your date, because you can't book a venue without a date, your time, your guest count, your budget. Those are great tenants to have in place for your wedding. So let's get crazy. Now it's time to hire your vendors. So you're gonna need an officiant, whether that's a friend, family member, or someone locally. It's probably a good idea to have a photographer, whether it's a friend or family or someone locally gonna need some flowers, maybe some decor, maybe a DJ. Again, you're gonna reference back to your budget what you can spend and figure out the vendors that you need for your big day. I'm always an advocate of booking a package, whether you're booking the package with the venue that you're eloping at or having your ceremony at or a small wedding at or a package with a company. You're just gonna save a lot of money by all of it being bundled together. Okay, so you've got almost everything locked and loaded for your big day, but don't forget, you have to get there. So whether you're booking a flight, a rental car, a hotel, bed and breakfast, make sure that you book that right after you book your venue because you don't want to miss out on the flights, the times, or the hotels that you're really excited about. Don't forget, your wedding isn't just the ceremony and the reception. It's kind of the whole experience. So I recommend being mindful about the moments leading up to and the moments after your wedding. 
You know, if you've got people in town that are there early, like maybe book some activities or some get togethers. Um, do you want spa time before your wedding day? Or do you wanna just take off and abandon all of your guests right after your ceremony? I would get very, very specific about the type of activities and experiences that you want prior and after. The whole week can be an experience. Now we're gonna get real down and dirty. So getting a marriage license in the state of California right now is a little bit of a complicated thing. Every single county has different requirements. So I highly recommend that no matter where you're having your ceremony in the great state of California, you need to be contacting the county and the city clerk of wherever you intend to get your marriage license and figure out what their requirements are. Right now, a lot of city halls and city clerks are closed. They're not taking appointments, and it's really, really hard, even as a resident, to get an appointment. So do your research. Every county is different. One great thing about California is that you don't have to get your marriage license in the same county that you're holding your ceremony. So if you're traveling through multiple cities or multiple places through California and you wanna get your marriage license in one and have your ceremony in another, that is totally okay. Another tricky part about California is that every county charges a different amount for the marriage license. In San Francisco, it's expensive. It's $110. In San Diego, it's $60. So I would just do your research and figure out how much you need to budget for your marriage license cost. California does require one witness. Your photographer can act as that or any of the guests at your ceremony, minus your officiant. And you do have 90 days between when you get your marriage license and have to perform your ceremony. If that time lapses, you're gonna have to go back and get a new marriage license at the same cost. Whew, that was a lot of nuanced details, but we got down and dirty. So those are all of my tips on having a small wedding in California. I hope they were helpful. I'll see you next week for my tip of the week.